Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about functors, applicatives, and monads. Alright, so hopefully I didn't already scare you with those words because they're kind of obscure if you've never uh, worked with func functional programming before. But it's actually, I'm trying to explain them in a very simple, in very simple terms. Because when you ask someone in the community, like, what's a monad, you typically get very different responses. What's a monad? Dude, man, <laughs> it's just a box, bro. <laughs> yeah. And then if you work with that, like, kind of definition, then you run into other people who are just like, well, actually, actually, okay, a monad is a monoid in the category of vendor fucker, okay? So my goal, to be honest, is to go with a, more like the first definition, like a very simple explanation of what, what are these uh, abstractions are and how you can use them, how you can interpret them, and basically go from there. You can always go more into depth if you really need to, but I've been working with a very simple definition of these terms, and uh, it's been going very well for me. There's a few exceptions that I know like that don't work and we'll go into why, why they don't work and stuff. So what, what are, what are, what, what's a functor? What's an applica applicative? What's a monad? So basically they are abstractions uh, for uh, basic operations that we use in functional programming. So starting with functors, functors can be thought of things that are, that can be mapped, that can have a map method. So we've looked briefly at the map method in my fundamentals tutorial. So if you haven't checked that out, you can check it out. Uh, basically, the map function will take, so it's a two parameter function most of the time. The first parameter is a function. So let's say for uh, a list. So you have a list of numbers, right? If you want to turn those list of numbers into a list of strings, so basically you want to go over each one of them and turn it to the string, well, normally what you would do in like an imperative paradigm, you would probably go a for loop, and for each of the items in a for loop, you'd convert it to a string, then you would either mutate that data into that same structure or you'll create a new list and return that list. So, you know, that's a very old, old style way of doing it, but uh, in a functional paradigm, you would use a map method, which is very similar to the select method in link queue in C sharp, which what you'll do is you'll pass a function that in this case will turn an int to a string. So just that two string method and you'll map it, you'll apply it, you'll apply it to that list. So it goes, I'll, I'll put up some code in the, in the screen so you can follow along, but basically it's going, um, option or, or sorry list dot map then you pass that function that two string function and then you pass you pass the list of integers so what that's going to do is going to iterate over each element of that list and it's going to convert it to a string well we can use this map as a as an abstraction because multiple things can be mapped like for instance, an option, an optional type. So you can have either some value or you can have none, no value. And you can use map on that as well. So if you have an optional integer, so let's say uh, sum two, right? Uh, and you would want to convert that two into a string, but you would still want to keep that value two in, as, as an optional value. So you can define a map function that you can do option dot map, pass that to string, and I'll convert that sum one, uh, so, sorry, sorry, sum two, because I used two, sum two, and it'll be sum uh, string two, right? So I'll put that some code on the screen so you can follow along. And so this is a map, mapping function, and we can like conclude, or not conclude, we can say, hey, like both of those two constructs, list and map, uh, sorry, list and option, can have this map function. So that, that's very interesting. And if you extrapolate it, though these two constructs are functors, right? So that, that's a functor, something that can be mapped. This is the basic analogy. And if you're following along, I'll include uh, two resources I find very good to explain these 
Uh, definition is really simple terms, so you can go on uh, F Sharp for Fun and Profit by Scott Blashen. Uh, probably the best uh, resource to learn functional programming in F Sharp. He has also a lot of tech talks. So I'll link an article uh, or a blog post about uh, functors, applicatives, and uh, monads in the description. And there's also, like I said, the box analogy. So there are many people have written about us. Um, and only people that really criticize that kind of analogy are really like the hardcore category theory map, like a, like hardcore math Haskell. Well, not obviously not all Haskell developers, but the, the people are more um, like very precise in that definition because that definition of a box analogy where let's say, so a box, you can think of a box as something has a value in it. So you have a box and you have, let's say a, an integer. So you have a box two. And the only role is to contain a value uh, that is generic. In this case, we're using an int. Um, so the box analogy would say, like, you can map over a box, right? So that two that's in the box, you can map over and say, well, uh, I want to pass a two string uh, function to it. So the two becomes, you know, you, you, uh, you map. So you do box.map two, uh, two string, and then you pass the, the box that has a value two, and it'll become a box that has a value of string two, right? So it's a very simple analogy, but it's very rewarding, I feel, to understand uh, what, what basically uh, a functor is, right? Uh, and uh, there's a lot of criticism because there's mathematical laws that need to be, uh, that, that need to be applied or not, that need to be respected in order for it to be a functor. And I'm not going to go over these laws because, first, like I said, most of the time, uh, it, it just works, right? There, there's a few examples where uh, things you would intuitively believe there would be functors are not. And a good example of that is like a hash map. So a hash map is a collection that can only have, uh, so no values can be the same. So you have a, a, like a hashing function, which by default is just the hash code of, of the object. And you can know, you cannot have, uh, did I say hash map? Bah, I meant hash set. Uh, well, hash map is also a kind of, a, it still applies. But basically a hash set cannot have two of the same value. So let's say, for example, you have a list of integers. So like one to 10. And you want to apply the modulus of two to each of those values. So that will basically determine whether your value is pair or impair. And then you want to convert that value to a Boolean, let's say, or a string. Let's do a string for now. So what that will do is it'll be like uh, the end result of that will be uh, a list of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And, or that will be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, I should say, um, of a string value type, or data type. And so that's fine. But if you have a hash map, so you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. So that works because they're all different values. Or I, I keep mixing up hash map and hash set. That's a bad habit. But you have a hash set of uh, numbers one through ten. If you map over it and do the modulus of two, well, you'll end up with just two values. You'll end up with zero and one, right? So first, so the first thing you can notice the structure is totally different. And now you do the two string that works, but you don't have the same result. Uh, uh, as before, uh, as you would have with a collection, you wouldn't have. So basically, the um, and and the the mathematical laws that you can look into, they kind of determine that yeah, this the, this is not a functor, right? Doesn't mean you can't like implement the math, like a, a map function to it. It just means that you're not gonna have. Uh, it doesn't apply to the functor laws, and it's not a functor. That, that's the only thing that it means. So those are example. That's an example of what's not a functor, and like a lot, of, like most of the time, a, a generic type that that looks like a box or looks like a, a list will have uh, will be a functor most of the time. Uh, so to conclude that section, a functor is something that can that is mappable, right? Another thing I want to bring up that will help the explanation is, uh, and Scott Washington goes into this in his uh, in his blog post, is that you can kind of look at it as you have two worlds, right? You have this world, this normal world where you have ints, strings, doubles, uh, whatever, simple data types. And you have this elevated world, right? 
So this elevator world would be the world of option, list, uh, sequence, async, like these generic types, right? The, the, these types that are, that are generic and contain values of, uh, that, that are generic. So if you have that kind of analogy into place, what a map is really doing is it's, so you have, let's say a list of A, you know, a, a, generic, a, uh, a generic type, and you want to convert that to a list of B, right? so another generic type. What you need with map, how you do it, is you have a function, um, the function that goes from A to B. So let's say in this case, just to, to explain it better, we go to int to string. So you have a list of ints, and you want to have a list of strings. How you would do this with map is you would go list.map and you would pass a function that goes from int to string, which is to string, right? And but what map will do is it will be able to use it on, on list types, right? So that's basically how it, and how it goes. And I'll probably include some, some picture that will really explain it. it it's more, a lot more simple than it actually looks. Like the, these words, functor, applicative, they kind of like scare you away from it. But if you've been programming, uh, let's say in C sharp and use link Q, then you probably you already have a good idea of what it is. So that's, that's another idea I, I really like. Now, applicatives, what are applicatives? Again, it's, the, this one looks a lot more complicated than it actually is, I'll be honest. Before we go into what an applicative is, let's remember that what is like something like partial application in F-sharp. So if you have a function that takes two parameters and you only give it one parameter, it becomes a function that is one parameter, right? Uh, we've talked about this in the fundamentals uh, video. So again, another invitation to check it out because there's a lot of content that will make it very uh, easier to understand. But the, so that the, the term application is actually giving a parameter to a function. You can think of it that way, that, that is apply. And what an applicative is, is you have a function. So you have a, a in the elevated world, Right, you can have in the case, let's, let's use option. So you can have an option of, let's say, uh, instead of int, you can have an option of int to string. So an option of a function, right? So an optional function. And um, what apply would do is it will apply a parameter to that optional function. Now you might be running, wondering, like, why do I need this apply? Because map seems pretty good in that context, I have like a, an option of A and I want an option of B. Why don't I just use map to map over that, that function that goes from A to B to convert the, the, the option A to option to B? Well, I would agree with you for like one parameter, but let's say you have like four parameters. Now, what you have to do, that's like a, a more complicated operation. You have to either, you know, unwrap each of those optional values applied to the function and then raise the, the result. And that's kind of annoying to do. So what apply, how its, uh, its advantage is if you just lift that function, you can apply, so use the function apply to apply each of those uh, elevated parameters to arrive uh, the result you want. So that's that's more of the advantage. And so, uh, for example, what you can do is, so let's say you have a function that adds two numbers, right? So you have uh, a plus b equals c, whatever. You can use apply if you have, let's say, a, a, like a very heavy computation where those a and b values are going to be optional, right? So you're not sure that you're going to have uh, a, a value. So it can be either some or none. Um, it could be a practical instead of mapping, you can pro like probably use map two in this context, but what's even simpler is just to raise, so raise the function in the optional world. And the key word here is, uh, so there's, if you're elevating one value, it's called a return. So you're returning A, but in the context of a function, we use lift. So lift, pure return, the kind of the same thing, just, putting up to the elevator world. You can think about it that way. So if we raise the, or, or lift, the A plus B function to optional, 
then we have this new function, right? And then we can directly pass the option of A and option of B to get an option of C. And I, if you don't understand like how this really fits into anything, uh, I definitely understand. I was the same at first. Apply was more obscure than map. Map was like pretty simple to understand. Apply was a little bit different. Um, but uh, it, it is a very valuable tool once you like really understand everything, uh, especially for independent computations. And I'll get into that when I talk about monads, the, the independent versus sequential uh, aspect of each of these uh, abstractions. But uh, another thing to note is that all applicatives or uh, yeah, all applicatives are necessary functors, right? So th they are functors. So uh, if you can define uh, apply and return, which are the two functions you really need uh, in order to, to make it work, if you can define these two functions, that means you have an applicative. And if it's an applicative, it's also a functor. So you can also define map, right? Based on apply and return, you can define map. And uh, yeah, if, if a functor can define uh, return, it can also define apply. So these kind of like meld together, right? They, they, are, they are different, but they are very, uh, very related. And so now that we've looked at that, so if I didn't lose you yet, <laughs> hopefully I didn't use you yet, hopefully you're not sleeping already in your, on, your, uh, on your computer seat, um, we'll go into a monad. Now the dreaded monad is uh, like, this is the meme, like the, the master meme in the functional programming community because uh, every time you try to define it, it's so hard, right? It's, and, and that's why like the, you know, the, the monad is a monoided category of interfunctors. You just like, you know, you just don't know what the hell's going on. A bunch of words are being thrown at you. So that's why kind of the, the box analogy and the, these, uh, you know, the optional analogy come to co tend to come in mind. And like, even like the railway uh, analogy that, that Scott uh, puts out are really practical. So I'm not, not actually going to define it. Uh, and, and like so far, I haven't been defining these terms based on like like a true definition of what it is. I've been saying, well, you know, that's an applicative, uh, that's an applicative, that's an applicative, that's a functor. And uh, that's kind of the way I like to go about it. So a map, uh, so a functor is something that is mappable. An applicative is something that is that can define apply and return, and a monad is something that can define bind and return, right? So what is bind? Again, I've talked a little bit about this in the fundamentals tutorial, but bind is a function. So let's say we still have that world, right? We still have that, that uh, elevated world and a normal world, world. Well, what bind is, is it, it takes a an elevated value, right? Or it starts with an elevated value. So you can think of you know, options. Let's use optional for this analogy. So for an option, you can have some value. It can have none value. Let, let's not forget. So the function bind takes a function that takes a normal value, right? So it takes an int. It doesn't take an optional int. It takes an int, right? And returns, this function needs to return a, an optional value or a, a monadic value. So in this case, it's option. So what kind of function is this? Um, so let's think of a, a function that takes an integer and returns whether it's po a positive number or a negative number, but it's an optional because you have that zero. And let's say in this case, zero is none, right? It, it's, uh, we can't define if it's positive or negative. That, that's an example. So this function will take a, an integer and return an optional Boolean, let's say, like true for positive, false for negative, and none for zero, or some true if it's positive, some false if it's negative, and uh, none if it's zero. That, that's kind of one thing you can think of. Well, so bind takes a function like this, so that takes a normal value and returns a monadic value, or a, uh, yeah, like an elevated value, elevated in the sense of an option in this case. And then from like, that's the first parameter of the function. And then the second one is kind of like map apply, you pass it an elevated value. Or so in this case, in the function that we, we just saw, so the concrete example of this is the signature would be uh, bind takes a function that goes int to option of Boolean then the second parameter of the bind function will take an optional integer, right? So we'll only call that on the 
optional integer. So when do we use bind? Well, if we really think about it, bind is kind of like map in that you give it a function, right? So map, you get a function that goes A to B to convert a, you know, optional of A to an optional of B. But monad, you want to, so you still want to convert an option A to an option B, but the function you're passing does not return a B. It turns like an optional of B. So it's kind of like this, you know, all of these are kind of Lego puzzle pieces and you're trying to fit them together. And bind is just one of those glues that will help you with a function if a function returns an optional instead of a, 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 um, a, a mappable function. So that's kind of the way I like to look at it. I don't like to go too much into detail into the theory of this. Uh, all, at the end of the day, all these functions just try to help you glue together functions together and make build, uh, like bigger building blocks. Uh, of course, Monad is the one that we'll probably talk about the most on this channel uh, because Monads, like the state Monad, the reader Monad, um, like a lot of these monads are very useful and especially async, like async, uh, how asynchrony is done in F sharp is done with the async monad. And that's probably one of the most important, uh, tools to have in your toolbox. And in two videos, we'll be talking about computation expressions, which is very, uh, very important if you're going to use monads, uh, and you're going to use, uh, these more uh, complicated abstractions like async and sequences and, and options and results and, and stuff like that. So it's very important to just understand from this video, I just wanted to give you an idea of what these words mean and how they relate. And in subsequent videos, we're going to look at how they're used in the real world because we still like really haven't entered the real world. This is all still theory. And that's kind of what's annoying is that, uh, in order to make sense of a lot of tutorials, you kind of just have to, uh, you know, have a, just a little bit of background of what these words mean and how they, how they apply. Uh, so, um, yeah, hopefully I didn't lose you too much. Hopefully you're not still sleeping. Hopefully, uh, this wasn't a meta melatonin pill, uh, for you, but, uh, I promise it will get more interesting, uh, when we talk about asynchronous programming, computation expressions, and how all, all these, uh, words relate. So hopefully, you enjoyed, hopefully you survived this uh, dreaded video that I did not want to make, uh, but had to make, you know, kind of like Batman, not the hero you needed, but I forgot how that quote goes. Uh, but yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, if you like the content, make sure you like the video content, uh, comment, uh, really helps the algorithm out apparently. So I've been told and uh, subscribe for uh, more videos and better videos than this one because like I said, this kind of sucks to learn, but uh, hey, you kind of have to go through it. Uh, for Freelance F Sharp uh, Consulting and Development, you can check out my website. And uh, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in that next video.